Good evening. So many of you have set a reminder for this. I've never seen the reminder ticking box ticked so often as it has been for this person because tonight it's 10 out of 10 with Sally Hughes, author, journalist, TV presenter, radio presenter, all round amazing woman, a uh, friend of mine, um, but also co-founder of Beauty Banks. And there you go, Sally, she's right there, you see, and also super efficient person. And she's going to join me in a second and I'm really excited to know about this. Look at this. Oh my God, I'm so excited. I've been waiting for this one. Probably, hello. Hey. Probably one of my most requested of all time. Can I just say this? Yes. I set a little timer for us. I have never seen so many people sign up and set the alarm for you. Oh, that's so nice. Thank you. Really appreciate it. Not thanks to me, thanks to you. Um, and also I was saying that in the little stories earlier on, I feel like we're most aligned in terms of beauty journalists. We're sort of slightly outside of beauty journalists, you so more than me. But I love the slight sceptical stroke cynical so that when I know you approve of something and you recommend it, I'm really going to take note. Oh, well, that's nice. Uh, yeah, I do. I am really, really, really picky. Um... And I am sceptical. I hope that I'm a mixture of sceptical, cynic, cynical, but also I love products. I'm not sneery about products. I love, love, love products. And I don't want anyone to ever think that because I just love this industry. And I love products as much as the viewer, but I want them to not buy the wrong thing and to look at the right thing. That's In that way, I think we're most aligned. It's interesting. I was more of a traditional old school beauty journalist, but you don't actually need to be a beauty journalist. You're in demand as a journalist. So I feel like you choose to be a beauty journalist because you have so much passion for it. Yeah, so um, I don't, um, yeah, I write things that aren't about beauty and always have. And um, I do beauty journalism because I love it. I love it. And I have always been obsessed with it since I was a kid and I know a lot about it. And I just, I love it. I wouldn't want to give it up. And I think for a long time, um, what we do was looked down upon and that was always very annoying and irritating to me and I always always thought that there, there is no reason why beauty journalism can't be every bit as good as any other form of journalism you still need a beginning a middle an end some style some jokes some opinions and the implication that it couldn't be that because women who love beauty aren't very clever boiled my piss frankly and so that's why I ended up uh, taking on the column and, and I love it. How long has it been now? Uh, about 11 and a half years. And that's when you can tell you really love something, if you, if you stick at it for that length of time. And I do think it's one of the ones that gets pinned most often. Um, I love your column. I always have. And I think one of the things that I was most keen to do was to champion the high street. And I feel like you champion the high street. I mean, you're sort of 50 best budget buys, 20 best budget buys. When you do your annual reviews, I can see so many of my followers tagging it and telling me, look at this, look at this, it's incredible. So how would you, how would you describe your skin hair, just to put what you're about to choose in context? Okay, so um, my skin is uh, very clear. Um, I don't break out ever. I don't get blackheads or anything like that. It is very dry. It is uh, prone to dullness. Um, I, I look after it very carefully. That's another thing that I think people is probably useful for people to know. No judgment if you don't, but you should know when, when we're doing this. Um, I am not a sun worshipper. And then my hair is incredibly fine. My hair is bleached um, and it's naturally brown with grey at the front. And it's incredibly fine and fluffy, which we are going to come to. And then the skin on my body is ridiculously dry. Ridiculously dry. I could never, ever, ever just have a shower, get dressed and leave the house the way people do. Like, that blows my mind. I have to set aside 20 minutes to fully baste myself before I can leave. And do you know, whenever I'm speaking about dry skin conditions and dry body skin conditions, I quote you. I don't expect you to even know you're being quoted in my videos, but I say, don't oh, ask I me. I'm because I'm the shower, gets dressed, looks down at their scaly legs and goes, oh, I should have moisturized. And I say, don't follow me for body advice, follow Sally Hughes. Is it true you never. told me once you, you have ichthyosis? 
Yeah, so I have um, ichthyosis vulgaris, which is an inherited condition. Uh, you've basically got a 50 50% uh, chance of getting it. I caught it from my father. Um, one of my children has it, one of them doesn't. And it is, I have incredibly, incredibly dry skin. There are upsides to it. My cell turnover is incredibly rapid. Uh, so I don't scar so easily, which is quite nice. Um, but the downside is I'm incredibly, incredibly dry flaky skin, have to moisturize with really, really heavy, rich moisturizers. And crucially, I have to exfoliate tons. I really, really, really have to exfoliate. There are lots of things that help. Shaving your legs is really helpful if you have ichthyosis, for example. Um, so yeah, that's me. And um, I could never, ever, ever just run out of the house. I always have to take time to moisturize. So I would say like body lotions. I am like body lotion obsessive there isn't a body lotion I haven't tried I think and then in terms of um makeup anything goes I just love makeup I've always worn makeup I'll do new but you're I'll... a fully trained makeup artist as well well you? I was a makeup assistant and I was trained as a makeup artist but I was never going to be one wasn't talented enough didn't want to be one anything like that but yes I am a trained makeup artist and um I anything goes I love color I love nudes I love lots of makeup I love not very much makeup I'm really kind of open-minded when it comes to makeup I think you should do what makes you feel good on that day okay right let's dive it straight in Sally Hughes because I am absolutely normally when I, I'm on one of these I'm thinking I think I might know more than this person I'm not sure about this but now I'm like School is in session, Professor. Teach me well, everything. Well, we do tend to agree, don't we? We, we tend do. to kind of feel the same about things generally. We you know we we do see each other at launches, and we're like, oh bollocks about some things, aren't we? Always. So, so I just say to anybody watching this, <laughs> back in the days when we used to go to launches, I think Sally and I first bonded over the sort of slightly skeptical side eye, where I'd look at her and I'm like, this isn't just me, right? <laughs> yeah. No, we've definitely been to a few launches where I've gone absolute bollocks and you've gone yeah and we've just like shall we shuffle out so uh let's start with some skin um can i just say that i have deliberately chosen products that i haven't banged on about too much already because i know it's quite boring for people nobody wants to hear me talk about like chanel number no. five anymore or do you know what i mean or double wear mascara or whatever it is so i've tried to kind of go off piste a little bit um but there are some in here that are just unavoidable, can't not mention. So let's kick off with, well, we were talking about body. Should we do body? Yeah, uh, absolutely. A bloody soap and glory sugar crush, mate. This, pro what lipstick am I wearing? I'm wearing MAC Subculture and I'm wearing V Deity. So uh, this is sugar crush body lotion. This is really, really relevant to what we were just talking about in that it's an AHA body lotion so what you get here is you get moisture and you get scrub you get moisture and exfoliation and crucially it does not stink and aha body lotions as you know nadine stink generally they stink palmer's makes a brilliant one it reeks you can only put it on before bed if you're definitely not going to have sex um you or not hoping to get any sex um, and then there's Ameliorate, which also doesn't smell very nice. There are various ones in America which don't smell so great. The CeraVe one, which is brilliant, you can't get here. Annoying. But this one works and smells nice. So it smells of kiwi fruit and lime. If you like fruity smells, you'll like it. If you don't, you won't. But it works so, so, so well. It gives me a perfect amount of moisture and scrub. It just keeps everything really, really smooth. Um, it's cheap, so I buy this. I buy tons and tons and tons of it um, because people might not realise that we get sent everything, but toiletries you tend to buy. You know, when you, when you sort of buy bulk toiletries, you tend to buy, we don't get sent them. I buy these in the tens. I buy. I always like, buy my things like that, three for two on boots. If I find out there's a three for two, exactly I always, that. Share, always share for three for twos because that's when I buy them. Um, do you apply that in the morning or do you apply that at night? Like, are you a slippery salamander at night? 
No, so um, it, it depends if I'm bathing or showering, but typically I will put this on in the morning after showering and you can get dressed quite rapidly afterwards. But if I was having a bath, I've got a funny one with baths. So I really, really love a bath, but I only have maybe one or two baths a week. So my rule is cheap shower, expensive bath. So I use cheap shower gel, cheap body lotion if I'm having a shower. But if I'm in the bath, I would maybe choose something a bit bougier as my body cream because it's all part of the experience. You and I once had a bonding moment over the whole shower. Are you a shower or a bath person? I probably only have two or three baths a year. And for me, I hate this term. It's a little bit self-care-ish. It's a little bit like, I'm just going to relax. I'm going to take it easy. I'm going to put, for me, it's always a bit of Clarins or something like that in my bath. I take it easy. But I often come out and have a shower afterwards. <laughs> it's... um. I, well, I've got a shower attachment on my bath, so I would never just get in the bath, dunk in it and get out again. I would have a bath and I would shower myself on the way out. Um, but yeah, I, I would have like a Clarins moment or there's an amazing uh, body butter from Fenty that would be another bougie body moment for me. But day to day, shower, this. Yeah. And a bath for me would be like an afternoon on a Saturday or an afternoon on a Sunday. And this is weekly. Yes, my, that, that's a workhorse and my Sunday afternoon bath is just a bit of relaxation and yeah. yeah. It, exactly that. So that's an amazing product. Also, because I use so much body care, I want something cheap and, and I, I think this is honestly priced. Like I think it's nicely and honestly priced. You get tons, it's a 500 mil, which is a big beast. And you can see I've always, always, always got one on the go and I will buy whenever, as you say, they're on three for two, I'll get mm -hmm. nine or something so that's body i think that's my only body product can i say in ameliorate's defense they now do they know that their original aha lactic acid body lotion smells of off yogurt it does i'm sorry um but uh they do now fragranced ones have you been yes. sent the fragranced ones yes what i would say about ameliorate because it's a brilliant product and it works really really well ameliorate is particularly good if you have keratosis pilaris. So, so for example, this product is a daily body lotion. If you're like a bride getting ready to wear a strapless dress and you want like to bring out the big guns, this is not what I would choose. This is like a maintenance program. Um, so Clarins Renew Plus Body Serum or Ameliorate, something a bit more heavy duty is what I would bring in there. But this is like your daily. Also, can I just say, Sally, Ameliorate can tingle. And I'm not sure you want to sit on the train up to town. Just yeah. feeling a little bit itchy, tingly, I know. Yeah, and it's pricier. You know, it's pricier. Yeah, there yeah. is a good Ren one, Laura. Ren also do a good one. I would move in that direction if you are trying to fix something. But that is a day-to-day -day keeping on top of flaky skin situation, the one I've just showed you. So, next, I want to, I'm going to do some makeup. So... This foundation, I am obsessed with foundation. I test every single foundation that comes into my house. And can um, I just say, she's not making that up. I've been at events with her. She went, don't look at my skin. I'm testing a foundation. I don't like it. Yeah. Yeah, I test every single foundation. Sometimes, as you say, even if I hate it, I'm out and about and I'm like, ugh, don't like how I feel. What, I tried one yesterday that I didn't like. So this, when this came, my hopes were not high because Dior traditionally is not a brand I enjoy for base, right? They brought this foundation out last year and it is easily now in my top 10 foundations of all time. And it is Forever Natural Nude. Okay. So Forever Natural Nude is a light coverage foundation. It's easily one of my products of the year. I would say it's got a smidge more coverage than MAC Face and Body, which I adore. Um, it's got less of an eggshell finish than MAC Face and Body. It is really, really, really natural, and it's more than a tinted moisturizer, less than a medium coverage foundation, and there is something about it where every single time I wear it, I think, oh, my skin looks nice. And Lauren came, uh, so Lauren, who works with me at Beauty Banks, Lauren lives down the road from me. Her flat's really near me. And she, every time she comes round and she goes, oh, your skin looks nice. I've always got this on my face. It is so, so, so good. And I tell you what, Dior, for me, are on a gold run. 
I have found Dior a little bit boring in recent years, to be really, really honest. I haven't been that excited by anything they've done. But Peter Phillips has done something over there where suddenly everything that comes out, I'm like, oh, that's good. Like the concealer is brilliant. The last concealer, the creamy mo moisturizing one. This is amazing. They've obviously had a big refocus on nails. They've got some amazing, the new cushion powder is good. Like I think that Dior is the brand to watch because everything they do at the moment is really, really good. And um, I have not been excited about Dior makeup in quite a long time. And suddenly I'm like, yes. So I agree, Pro Shine. Peter Phillips is genius. Where was yeah. he before? He's done stuff at Chanel, hasn't he? And he's done, um, and he does loads and loads of catwalk. He's a brilliant, brilliant, brilliant makeup artist. But the effect he's had on product development at Dior has been really, really great because literally everything that comes in, I'm like, oh, yeah, I like that. Mm -hmm. And I haven't felt like that since the 90s, to be quite honest. They're about to launch a clean foundation. Well, this one is mostly natural ingredients, but I don't care. I just want to know how it, how it feels and looks. I don't care. Um, they... Um, I feel like, can you remember in the 90s, they made the best eyeshadows? The eyesha the five eyeshadow palettes were amazing. And can you remember Viseart? Yes. Uh, Viseora, Viseora. So Viseora was Dior's makeup artist range in the 90s. I've still got some Viseora, actually, in my um, beauty museum in the loft. Um, and they were so amazing in the 90s. Then I just felt they went off the boil and they are banging again. They are so good again. Um, we no, should I'm not do wearing it. a live and get out our vintage makeup. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'll do that. I've got bloody loads. The times yeah. I look at some of my vintage makeup and I'm tempted to try it, I can't tell you. I remember you posting some little miniature Prada, the most eco-unfriendly thing in the world. And I remember DMing you saying, I've still got all that as well. I can't bear to throw it away. That would be really good fun. I went I went to the launch of that brand and it was in Prada on Sloan Street. And this mm -hmm. would be like 98 or something. And I went to the launch, it was a very, very young journalist, and they showed it to us. And one of the products was £60. And everybody was like, oh, how much? £60 for a beauty product. It was like, there was only creme de la mer that hit the, over that barrier at that time. So uh, what should we do now? Let's go, we'll go back and forth. So I'm going to do some more skin. Um, this cleanser is my favorite ever ever cleanser and you know what i was just saying about um i don't really care if it's green and clean do i like it yes or no is the only thing is I this care. is this the pharmacy green balm oh i thought you could show so it is it's green clean ignore the fact that it's pink it's just a special edition that they did for yeah. apple it's the same product right so it is the loveliest, loveliest cleansing balm. I have been through loads of it. It is so thin, it is so light, because although I've got dry skin, I actually hate cleansers that leave moisture on your skin. I, like, I don't like that feeling of the coating, can't stand it. This doesn't do that at all. It goes really, really thin when you add uh, some water to it. It just comes away so easily, smells amazing. I'm sorry, I'm just not somebody who moans about fragrance in skincare personally. I just think people need to get over it. That's just my... Like, if you don't want it, if you don't want fragrance in your skincare, I totally get it. That's fine. But I am perfectly happy to have fragrance, especially in cleanser, because I want a spa moment. I want a lovely moment for myself. So this is the special edition. Ignore the fact that it's pink. It's normally green. It normally doesn't smell of apple either, but periodically they do these special editions. That's the power of Sally Hughes is I'm not a balm cleanser. And I tried that balm cleanser and really liked it. Right? It's because really I associate good. balm cleansers with that. And I was lucky enough once to have Yves Long actually give me a facial, which was yeah. worth it. Worth it just yeah. for the gossip. Because she was so just good. the most wonderful, firm-handed, indiscreet woman. I adored her. I love I never really liked that sort of balm cleanser. But I do love that one. I feel like it's a balm for people that don't like oily, gunky balms. Exactly that. It's a balm for people who don't like balms. And although I do like balms, I'm so picky about them. And I think that if you associate balms with that greasy residue, then you would be wise to try this because mm -hmm. this does not do that. And it shifts everything. 
I completely agree with Sally. It's perfect. And it's perfect if you've spent the day doing TV presenting or video presenting or you've been on stage and you need to take it off. I love it. Yeah, yeah it's, it, it's amazing. I think Nadine's going to put the details of everything down below. So I am know. absolutely. Yeah. I'm going to save this. Please don't worry. And I will list everything. Um, and also, I have to say, Sally is really good. But if you ask for a specific shade name, Sally might come in and actually tell you what her shade names are. Not that yeah, Sally's yeah, yeah. shades would suit you necessarily, but people want to know. Yeah, people asking about my foundation. No, it's not the Dior one. It normally is, actually. But at the moment, I'm working on a foundation thing. This is the new NARS one. Um, and very nice it is, too. So, um, makeup again. I can't not include this, and I have spoken about it before, but I just can't not include it because I cannot be without it. In fact, I've got six. So this is the Bobbi Brown Full Coverage Face Brush, and it is the absolute bollocks. It is um, a foundation brush, but it works for cream bronzer. Um, so you can do quite a lot with it. You could even use it for blusher or to push if you if it was the only brush you had. There's something about, I use it for primer. I use it for everything. There's something about this brush. There are so many bristles. It's quite expensive, but you can see where your money goes because they've packed loads of bristles into a small amount of space, which is- I do think it's one of the original Bobby ones. Yeah, it's just amazing. Created uh, by a woman that knew when she wanted a multi-purpose brush, what to create. There's so much hair in it in a small space. It's really, really, really dense. And the great thing about that is it doesn't leave marks in your makeup because it's so densely packed. It's synthetic, so you can wash it with fairy liquid. Like, you can give this brush an absolute battering and it never, ever, ever splays. Hairs don't come out. You can really use and abuse this brush. It is a workhorse brush. It is like, you can cover it in fairy liquid and it's like, thank you, give me another. Like, it's, it's hard, this brush. Um, it's such, such, such good quality. The handle is perfectly weighted. I like a short handle. It's just, it's the best brush. There are two brushes that I never, ever, ever am without. I've got about six of these and I've got seven of these, which is the Beauty Pie Concealer Brush. Those two together, this is the Pro Angle one, not the other one. I don't like the other one, but this is the Pro Angle one. These two together, I cannot be without. And I've got so many of them. I've got them in every handbag. I just cannot, cannot, cannot be without. Um, and so, uh, yes, yeah, somebody's saying rosacea and fragrance. Absolutely. If you're super sensitive and you have rosacea, do avoid fragrance. But the idea that fragrance is inherently bad in all skincare, I fundamentally disagree with, which is why. No, I've got perioral dermatitis. It's the only reason I don't like fragrance in my yeah, skincare. Yeah, if you can't take it. Fine. But from the neck down, I love it. But also percentages, you just need, you need to be under 5% to, to be below the irritant threshold. So all of that stuff matters. Anyway, uh, so this brush, can't be without, quite expensive, worth every single penny, in my opinion. Everybody saying, ordered, adds to basket. <laughs> um, I have bought, um, I have obviously been gifted some of these over the years, but I've bought loads of them. I just can't be without it. They're great. And I've bought all of these. They're just amazing. A lot of people ask me for a brush to recommend to apply the Chanel Cream Bonzer. Would you use that? Yeah. So this is great. And if you can't stretch to this, and I know it's a lot of money, um, the, you can get, you basically want one this shape that's kind of dense and fluffy because then you won't get the brush marks. So even if you can't stretch to this one, you basically want this sort of a shape. Okay, Marcia Kilgore, dupe time. <laughs> um, and this is a beauty pie one. Again, lots of bristles in a short space. What I love about this, I put my concealer on with it, but also, you know, when you put your brow gel on, your brow gel goes on your skin. I just clean yeah. up. And I when... absolutely swear by the hourglass version of that. Right. And I think that might be a little bit of a dupe for the hourglass one. Amazing. It's a, it's a dupe for the Pat McGrath one as well. Mm -hmm. The other good thing about it is when you do your eyeshadow and your eyeliner, if you want to sharpen it up, you just take this and you go upwards and it cuts off the edges. It's great. And also I think they're shaped really beautifully for in here. I mean, not that you need a lot of inner eye concealer, but they, they basically fit exactly where that dark shadow is. They're brilliant, those brushes. They're amazing. So I use that brush with um, with the the Beauty Pie corrector because Becca uh, went away and I started buying this. Um, and then I just use a dash of concealer over the top. Um, I'm convinced that you're the reason that uh, the Becca 
under eye radiant concealer. It's going over to Urban Decay, isn't it? No, not Urban Matchbox. Decay. Matchbox. 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 Has it happened yet? Yeah, I think you can now. I think you can now get it um, on Smashbox, and also they're doing the um, the shimmering skin perfector. You know, the highlighter that was yeah. also a hero for them. That's gone over to Smashbox. As I well. think they're taking Correct. about five hero Becca products and taking them Correct. across. But I think one of the reasons that that under eye concealer is a hero product in the UK is because of you. Because I remember you had it in your cold beauty box, and that's one of the first time I'd ever really used it because the brand had never spoken to me. It's um it's an amazing product and um I'm I'm sorry but this is just a total rip off of it. I'm just gonna say it is. Um but it's obviously if you're a Beauty Pie member it's seven yeah. or eight weird or something. Um so hair, should we talk about hair? Yes. Oh somebody's just said it's at Sephora in four shades already. That's under Smashbox, by the way. So just to yeah. You know. Yeah, let's do hair because I think our hair is strikingly similar. Yeah, really baby fine, isn't it? So, and I used I used your quote the other day, and I should have credited it for you when I was talking about um, looking at your mother and and thinking about what your hair would look like when you got older. And I said to use Sally Hughes's words, "Mine was going to look like a fluffy cauliflower one day." <laughs> Yeah, it's so weird, isn't it? The way women used to have their hair like that when they were 45 or something. It's so mad. It's lovely. No, I took a picture of my mum in Claridge's the other day for her 86th birthday. And the first thing I thought was she's got a cauliflower. She's not watching, it's fine. <laughs> yeah, it, times have changed so much, haven't they? That, you know, older age looks so different now to how it used to, you know, just in one generation, it's changed so much. Because I remember when I was a kid, women over 40 were, were supposed to have short hair. They weren't supposed to yes. have long hair. Well, that's obviously mental and now you see women in their 70s with loads of long hair and it looks so great anyway uh so my hair is naturally brown um yes i agree on aveda aveda is my favorite brand it's my most used hair care brand but i've talked about them so much i've deliberately left them out of this so my hair is naturally brown and then all of this is naturally gray and so a year ago i can't believe it's been a year but um a year ago i bleached it and now I tone it myself. And the reason I tone it myself is because I can't use PPD, which is in every single permanent gray covering toner in the world. Either PPD or PTD, every single one contains one of those two. And I'm allergic to both because they're basically the same. So I have to use a uh, direct dye. So wash in, wash in, wash out dyes on my bleached hair. So I get it bleached in a salon and I swear to God, I have tested, since I bleached my hair in the past year, I've definitely tested in excess of 100 products for grey and silver hair to put over bleach. Every time someone says, oh, you need to try this, I'm like, I've tried it. Because as soon as I bleached my hair, every hair care brand in Britain basically sent me everything to test. And I've used pretty and, much everything. Am I, being, and I, am I oversimplifying it in saying you're looking for the equivalent of those sort of purple gunky shampoos that get sent to me every time I color my hair or is it a different shade is it a bluer shade what is it so 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 uh things to bright and blonde hair tend to be purpley and things mm. to bright and silver hair tend to be bluey mm. but they're certainly in the same they're, they're in the same okay. color family there's not but if you were to use the purple ones there's a risk like like joe who's a mutual friend of ours she has a tendency to go a bit pinky purple sometimes and you don't you want to go that sort of Crispy yeah, yeah, yeah. Enemy color, don't you? Yeah, and also I'm all for a Mrs. Slocum vibe sometimes. Like, have some fun with it. It's fine. So, all right, Joe Jones, you're now officially Mrs. Slocum. <laughs> <laughs> Is she old enough to get that reference? I think not. Maybe. Probably not. So, um, the best thing there are about from the hundreds of products I've tested over the past year for my silver hair. And it's been real trial and error. Some things have made my hair go yellow. Some have made them go blue. Like it's been real trial and error. I've had many bad hair days, but I think I've got it now worked out. And the best product in my top 10 products at the very top are these Shrine Drops. Now, there is not much in our- Is the brand called Shrine? Yeah. British brand and bargain drugstore. There is not much that launches in our industry, and I think you would agree with me, where you're like, that's original. That is yeah. an original idea. Like, everything else is a variation on something that exists. A true innovation doesn't happen very often. This, I think, is 
original. So what do you get? So you get the box. It comes in loads of different colours. You can have fun, crazy colours, pink, purple, green, aqua, all of that. I use either silver or white. Those are the ones I like. And sometimes I use the ash one, which is a bit blondier. So what you get is you get this little silicon bowl, which obviously you can buy the kit without the bowl, but I'm just showing. So you get a little silicon bowl and you get a little spatula. You fill up to the line with your normal conditioner. And I have tried it with one pound value conditioner and I've tried it with posh conditioner. It does not matter. You fill it up to the line with your conditioner. Then you get a little serum bottle that's got, so obviously the packaging waste is tiny compared to a traditional uh, plastic bottle and they're like it's like food coloring for hair and you drop it into the conditioner and there's a recipe card in terms of it tells you how many drops you need for a dramatic finish how many you don't you put it into the conditioner you stir with your spatula you put it on your hair you leave it 10 minutes you wash it out that's it it's so easy it's cheap it comes in loads of different colors it's kind of quite democratic in that it doesn't matter what condition you use, nothing like that. You can switch up the color, you can mix them together. So I quite like mixing the ash with the silver, for example, uh, purple and blue mixes together really nicely. And it lasts three, four shampoos. And, and I do it once a week. Where do you buy that on the high street, Sally? <laughs> so I have always bought it. So I buy this. I have always bought it online from their website, but I've seen it on the Boots website as okay. well. Um, whether it's in bricks and mortar, I genuinely can't tell you, but they okay. do have the big website. But they have their own website and they have an Instagram account where you can see people using it. There's loads of little films of real women using it so you can see how it works. But literally, you just put conditioner in, drops in, mix it together, shampoo your hair, on your shampooed hair, 10 minutes to shave your legs, clean your teeth, whatever it is you need to do, then rinse it off and it lasts. Well, I do it once a week. And so it lasts like three shampoos. People are saying um, larger branches of Sainsbury's and Superdrug too. So there oh, you go. Okay, cool. Um, they, I let, see, I knew I would find out something new from you. I love that. They, um, my a hairdresser told me about them. He said, have you tried them? I really want to try them. And I said, no, but I will. So um, I messaged them. This was ages ago. I messaged them and said, um, oh, can you, can you tell me about this product? Do you have a PR? I want to talk to PR. And they said they said this is a long time ago I don't think it's the same person anymore whether it was someone really young they said we'll send you a load of product in return for a positive review and I was like no no it's no Have you met me? <laughs> so I was like no thank you I will buy it because it doesn't work like that that's not how I roll so they were like okay fine and then so I bought a load and absolutely loved it. And I've been buying it ever since. And actually, subsequently, I've spoken to them. And that was definitely an anomaly. That's not how they roll either. But um, they, um, but yeah, I buy it and it lasts ages because it's such a small thing, but it's packed with drops. Um, and I love it. It's amazing. When you, what, what this is white. Let's this give a quick shout white. out to your hairdresser as well, because people are going to want to know. Uh, so uh, my hair is cut either by uh, Jordan Garrett or Adrian Park Kitney, or Luke Hershison, all of them work at Hershison's. So you have your colour done at Hershison's as well, do you? No, because my colour's done at home. So the bleaching uh, gets done at uh, by Billy at Josh Wood, um, okay. or um, sometimes at the Aveda Academy. But like, so the bleach, so I just get bleach. So yeah. it's like, a kind of 1980s style highlighting cap situation where they just blitz me with bleach and I get not very nice colored hair, but they just go, try and get it as pale as possible. And then I take over at home yeah. and tell no, it, makes, it makes complete sense. Um, have you noticed that since having the bleach, your texture of your hair has changed? Have you noticed that it's become drier or thicker or? I, honestly, it has changed in the most brilliant way Good, because, yeah. because it's got fat and gritty. <laughs> <laughs> and my hair is so soft and floppy and fluffy and useless. Um, it's become, it holds. I can do. It's things. given it guts and body, hasn't it? Yeah. It's made it a little bit like I've got dry shampoo in almost. You yes. know, so like it's made it fat because obviously it swells the cuticle. Yeah. And it's 
just worked much better for me. So actually, I was somebody who could afford a bit of dryness. You, I mean, I always thought that's why I asked. I always thought of you as having perfectly conditioned hair. And sometimes fine, perfectly conditioned hair likes a little bit of bleach. Exactly. Yeah. It's responded really well to it. So this one, people asking, this one is the white one. This one. Okay. Um, but then I sometimes use the silver one or the ash one. But this one happens to be white. Um, brilliant. Such a good product. Like revolutionary. Amazing, amazing. So glad I discovered it. It was Hadley Yates, the hairdresser, who told me about it. He asked me about it and then I went and investigated. So, and it's one of those moments where when you see it and you held up the bottle, I just thought, why has nobody ever thought of that before? That's so clever. Oh, Gavin, you'd look so good with grey hair. Um, yeah, yeah. It, I've, I, it's been kind of life changing for me. It took me a while to get used to it. It took me a long time to um, tweak play around with products. I did the stupid thing where I was like, I'm going to test all of the products. And of course, 70% of them didn't give me the result I wanted. But that's my job. And I'm very lucky to have it. So it's fine. Yeah. Um, I'm going to stick with hair because we're talking about fluffy hair. Um, so the other problem I have is because my hair's fluffy, I want to smooth it. But my hair's really fine. So I don't want a silicon serum on it. It's this it's a clever balancing act. And inevitably, the one who has mastered the clever, clever balancing act is Sam Bloody McKnight. So. I love that product. So good. So this is Happy Endings. And the reason I wanted to mention this is because this is if you have fluffy hair. It's a de-fluffer that does not make your hair go flat and silicony and gluey. Because it's a very, very, very light cream um, and it goes on the ends of your hair you can put it on wet you can put it on dry so when I blow dry my hair I just do that with it at the tips after I've combed through my hair or if it's just already dry and it just wants to kind of be brought together like a bit of polish I put it on dry. I remember seeing you just before Christmas when you'd filmed with him and you had that updo. I and saw that you that night when you I? first saw it he would have given you one of the early prototypes wouldn't he i exactly. love that product. That's when it if was. you've got hair like sally's and mine if it's fine sally's is in much better condition than mine but if you've got those dry ends that are just a bit fluffy and annoying it's a great product and it will not weigh your hair down and you need to use so 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 little so it's called happy endings let me show you how much i would use you would use even less if your hair was wet i mean literally yeah literally and this would last you ages so i've had this particular one on the go since when were we at when were we at that dinner that night was that beginning of december yes that was sort of you just come out you had a really beautiful updo and i realized you've been filming with sam to you know obviously because of bio yeah. joe and everything and um and i could see then you had a new product in and you said to me oh i'm looking at some of these new products and i love it and then it got sent to me. I think it went into the Liberty Christmas Advent oh, calendar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, yeah. Is, it does come in a full size, but I've just got the mini and I haven't run out either. It's it a little goes a long way. And the other thing I really love about it, and this is true of Aveda products as well, is that if you rub them into your skin, they just feel like skincare. You don't get sticky, that tacky. Horrible stickiness. I know. Where you're like, oh, I want to wash my hands. It's just almost like the lightest moisture lotion. It's so great. It's such a great product. And I think it, it fixes a problem for me that wasn't fixed by anything else in that yeah. it's a defluffer that isn't like a serum. It's a defluffer, not a defrizzer. And you can put it all over. Like if you have frizzies, uh, fluffies up here, just do this. Oh yeah, I put it on my broken off bits here, which yeah. you don't have. And it weighs yeah. me down without making my scalp oily as well, because I have an oily scalp. I love it. I think it's such a great product. Jo was saying to me the other day, she can't say anything. And I, when I did a live with Sam, I tried to get, him to give me some advanced information but supposedly the MPD coming out of that brand is mind-blowing this year because he's had lots of investment it's so exciting I have seen it and it is very good it's exciting I have seen it with my own eyes and touched it with my own fingers um, by the way for everybody watching this Jo is prepared to get her hair cut but obviously she wants Sam to cut it so she was thinking of sneaking in under the radar but oh no I'm going to go along and film it so I'm going to film her having a haircut by Sam McKnight. I love that I haven't asked Sam for this, but I'm sure it'll be fine. Oh, and then I think we're going to go and try all his wigs on. Do you want to join us, Sally? So I have been to the wig room and um, the collection is absolutely astounding. How he does, what, something like 
just even if you just look at the work he did at Chanel, 12 shows a year or whatever, making it completely different each time. And that's before you factor in all the other designers that he does. I don't know how he keeps, I don't know how he keeps coming up. I with remember it. when I first started watching him on Instagram or following him on Instagram, he would basically just pose with those wigs on. And when you first got his book, Sam at Night Hair, in the beginning with just all of his Polaroids of all of him with each of the wigs on. Absolutely. Love that, man. Joe is music. actually watching now, so there you go. I've signed Aww. you up to Joe. We're gonna we're gonna do a video. We're gonna I want to video you having your hair cut. So put down the scissors, Joe Jones, because I know you're tempted to cut it yourself. Um, yeah, I love Sam with all my heart, but he like he he properly properly cares about those products, and that product happy ending is one that you can just feel the time and money that has gone into it. It's just they all really smell clever. incredible as well. Yeah. yeah. Hello, Joe Jones. Love you. She's got AJ with her, and he's crabby. Yeah. Um. So makeup. So. Um, I'm really doing myself a favour here by telling you because I posted a reel the other day of how I do my lip liner. Um, it was so good. Am I still there? I've gone black. No, you're, I can completely see you. Can you hear oh, me? I can see you perfectly. I can see you, so that's fine. Um, so I did a reel of how I do my lip liner and loads of people asked what it was because people tend not to read captions or lots of people don't read captions. Um, so Nobody reads a caption. No, so MAC Subculture is my most used lip liner ever. And it's funny, I was having, I was hosting an event last year and a makeup artist was doing my makeup. And um, she said to me, um, she got out a lip liner and I said, oh, which one is that? Because I was ready to say, can I get my own? And um, she said, oh, it's MAC Subculture. And I was like, oh good, phew, it's MAC Subculture. And she went, well, I mean, it's the best. Obviously it's the best. And I said, exactly. And I think it just, it just works with everything it works with every lipstick it works on every lip shape it works with novice skills it works when people are more expert it's just like it's like the perfect basic lip liner and also for anybody who hasn't seen sally's video of her lining her lip the wrong way and the right way and i love the fact whenever i do lip uh, tutorials joe jones has got the most perfect lips i do not have large lips it's mind blowing the difference it makes. It was such a brilliant reel, Sally. I loved it. It makes a massive difference. See, Jo Jones gets on my nerves because she always says to me, always, I speak to Jo every single day. And whenever we talk about lip liner, she's like, mm, I just don't think people use it. I don't get it. And it's like, because look at you, because look at you. You've yeah. got like these perfect, she's got the most gorgeous, perfect full lips. I've always thought, do you know what she reminds me of when I look at her lips? She reminds me of uh, the Pat McGrath models. Have you ever <laughs> seen a Pat McGrath? Lipstick. Yeah, they're just Even like apply to anybody that does not have lips like Joe Jones. I think personally, we should get Pat McGrath on board with lips like yours and mine, Sally Hughes. They are absolutely perfect, her lips, but mine are not. Um, no. they're fine, but, but, but they're not. And so, this uh, subculture is the best, and I buy so many of them. Basically, I've got one in every single handbag because I just always need one. I'm somebody who always wears lip liner, always, 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 even if it's just with a lip balm and no lipstick, mm -hmm. I always have a lip liner. Um, and I just have one of these in every bag. It's available everywhere. The other good thing about MAC is wherever you are in the world, you can go and get a subculture, which I like. And for anybody genuinely who, I mean, I presume you all follow Sally anyway, go and have a look at the reel. It's mind blowing the difference it makes. That's a very old trick, that one. That's how I was trained to do it. But it does work a treat, doesn't it? No, I did a lot. I love um, Dom, the in-house makeup artist at Mac. And he, we were doing some tips and tricks before Christmas. I think we were from Brown Thomas doing Christmas stuff. And he said, no, 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 Didi, you're doing it wrong going from the outside and so I was like oh, that, oh but that's your training as a makeup artist it's that knowledge of going that's how it's done yeah always go up because you, yeah. you, you your hand will do a thing where you get a really nice shape yeah so um a couple of products left so this is a new one out of all of the products I've chosen I think uh, as long with Sam's happy endings this is the newest product really recent discovery for me it's a discovery for me and I'm just obsessed with it and it's Medicaid Advanced Day Ultimate Protect SPF 50. Um, I find uh, sunscreen so incredibly um, personal and it, you know people like what they like 
and I am picky about sunscreen. And one of my bugbears with sunscreen is the way that they very often peel under makeup and the way they sting my eyes. I'm not an eye cream user. Um, I am somebody who uses my skincare everywhere. I've never been an eye cream user. And um, this just works. It works under makeup. It works around my eyes. It's just brilliant. I love the texture of it. It's not greasy. I love that there's no chalky cast. It's just a really, really great moisturiser. You can see how much I've used. Um, it, it's just so good. And I think Medicaid's a great brand. And I would say I love products so much and I love a bougie moment. I love a luxury moment. But my advice would be when it comes to sunscreen, do not try and get sexy. Do not try and get luxurious. Just get the one that works that you are going to put on your face. And I think Medicaid is a brilliant brand for that. La Roche-Posay is a brilliant brand for that. I just think be really Garnier as well, because same company as La Roche-Posay. I agree with you completely. I love Medicaid. I'm a huge fan of that brand. Um, it's very interesting, actually. I've never been tempted to try their SPS, but I will now. Is it a mineral or a physical? What is it? What sort of sunscreen is it? Uh, so I think there's a bit of both in there. There's definitely yeah. some synthetic filters in there. Um, it's definitely not a purely mineral one. I think there's a little bit of mineral in there, but primarily it's synthetic, is, um, uh, if memory serves, because it's really nice and clear. Um, yeah. but, but I don't get any itchiness with it. I don't get any stinging the with pilling, it. The pilling break. drives me bonkers with SPFs, absolutely bonkers, because genuinely they're not, they're formulated to be worn, ironically, when people sunbathe or out in the sun, they're not actually performed, they're, they're not uh, formulated to perform under makeup. It, dri it drives me crazy. That and thing where you're sitting in a meeting and you're suddenly doing this. Drives me mad. And also, I just, I think this is where, this is where I get a bit frustrated when people say, well, dermatologists, I'm only interested in recommendations from dermatologists. There are certainly some dermatologists in our industry who are makeup loving women, without a doubt. And great, I'm all for those conversations. But you know, and I know that loads of dermatologists you meet are men who've never worn a foundation in their life or who are people who are just not interested in the elegance of texture. They're not interested in makeup performance. And they think quite rightly, because they are doctors, they think medically, they think in terms of healthcare, what's gonna prevent skin cancer? What's gonna prevent sunburn? And I'm here for that. However, I'm a real woman in the real world and it needs to work with my life. And a sunscreen that performs well medically, scientifically, is of absolutely no value if people don't want to use it. And I think sunscreen has to be nice to use or you don't use it. It was very interesting. You used a word there to describe it when you held it up. You used the word moisturizer. In this situation, would you use it in place of your moisturizer, which is what I advise to people? So I personally am not somebody who would use a sunscreen and a moisturizer because I just think it's a lot. It's a bit facial buckaroo, isn't it? Like how many things can you put in your face? It's just not very pleasant. If it's really, really hot in the summer, I would just wear a dedicated sunscreen over my serum personally. Yeah, me too. Um, and if I'm not out and about much, I would use a moisturizer with a sunscreen in it or whatever. I, I'm just not somebody who's ever gonna put a face cream and a sunscreen on separately and I'm dry. So the thought of somebody with oily skin having to do that, I just think it's a bit crazy. I'm with you 100%. When people say to me, please don't make me put another step in, I said, you don't need another step. A well-formulated SPF would be hydrating enough. For me, vitamin C, hyaluronic acid in with an SPF is more than enough for me. 100%. And this, um, a, a good sunscreen will just have hyaluronic in it. You know, I, I get funny about hyaluronic. Sometimes I get sent products and they're all about hyaluronic acid. And unless there's something special about the hyaluronic acid, like multi or whatever, I just think, what do you want a cookie that you've got hyaluronic acid in your product? What do you want me to give you a gold star for that? You should. It's like, it's like showing off that you've got water on the table in a restaurant. So it's that. so interesting. So many foundation brands are going, oh, it's hyaluronic acid based. I mean, hyaluronic acid has always been a fundamental part of foundations for as long as I can, well, probably at least five or six years. Why are you highlighting at, it now? At least. It's nothing to show off about. I expect it. I want yeah. it there. I expect it there. And it's a bit like saying, well, you've got tap water on the table. So bloody what? It should be there. So and by the way, yes, I totally agree with the person that highlighted that. Facial buckaroo might actually be my favourite new term. <laughs> <laughs> it's the step that's going to make your face fall off the, the pilling it's when i use a foundation some and i often use a foundation with an spf in it 
and I've got a moisturizer and an SPF, you've just got all the more risk of the back legs of the horse coming up and going, I can't do this anymore. Yeah. I also think I also think with lots of women, if they're oily or if they're menopausal or whatever, quite a lot of the time they're losing half their products, just running off their face anyway. I just don't think it's necessary. Absolutely. Um, so my last product is a bit of makeup and I thought, I have spoken about it a lot before, but I just thought actually this is probably my most worn face ever. Um, and that is NARS Pure Radiant. Uh, I have worn this tinted moisturiser for well over a decade and I've been through many, many, many tubes of it. It just works. It just works. It's got um, an SPF 30 in it, a really good shade range. It gives you more than a tinted moisturizer. So you know, some people like those really transparent tinted moisturizers. I'm like, I'm all right. You know, I, I'll rather just do skincare and concealer. There's kind of no point to it. Um, this definitely has more than those products. It has as much as some light coverage foundations, to be honest. Um, it goes on so easily. I put it on with the bobby brush I showed you earlier, but I've also put it on with my fingers and it's fine to take it on holiday, take it to festivals, take it literally everywhere. It just gives great glow with no sparkle, no shimmer. If you want some shimmer, you can put some Charlotte Tilbury Flawless Filter underneath, of course. But it's just, it's just a really, really great, great formula. And traditionally, I've not been great with NARS foundations, but this product more than makes it's up. It's the best one. It's amazing. You know, I think you're either a Laura Mercier or a NARS tinted moisturizer person. Um, and this one just works brilliantly for me. It's just an amazing product. I've used it so, so, so much. Little goes a long way. Well over a decade for me since it came out. I just love it. It's amazing, amazing product. Somebody just asked about primer. Are you a primer person? I'm not a primer person. I don't really get primers. But with your experience of training as a makeup artist, are you pro or against? Um, I think primer is really amazing for some things. So uh, what primer does by and large is essentially give a fake surface to your skin. So it's a bit like putting a piece of paper through a laminator, right? So you're basically like giving it a fake surface. And that is really, really good if you have very textured skin, perhaps if you have rosacea and you have texture, it's quite good to kind of give a fake new surface with a primer. I personally use Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Flawless Filter almost every day because I like the light that shines through your foundation. And it's not that I'm wanting grip, it's not that I'm wanting resurfacing, I just like the light of it. Um, I personally don't think you need a primer to keep your foundation on. I don't personally agree with that. I mean, but then again, I don't have very oily skin and I don't get a breakthrough of shine a lot. And I know a lot of people that are addicted to all the Smashbox and Urban Decay primers because they like the mattifying effect, but they're very, very young with very overactive sebaceous glands. So, but yeah, I, and I, so if you've got very open pores, a very silicon primer will just act like polyfiller. It does work great. Um, but even then, I, I tend to prefer that patted or dabbed over the top rather than it rolling off. So those sorts of, there's a new Murad one, there's the pore refining one, and people said to me, is it amazing? And I said, look, I don't think it's gonna have a, it, I said, it, it doesn't really fall under skincare, it's almost like a primer makeup hybrid. And I said, the best way to use that, and Clinique is to have an amazing one, is just gently pat it on afterwards. I, it's on this table somewhere because I was trying it today. Um, yeah, it's like polyfiller. You can you yeah. can pat it into kind of little holes and, and grooves on your face. Um, I, I'm personally not somebody who uses that type of product very much because I don't want to be matte, personally. And I also don't I think like it's it. aimed at you as well. I think it's for people with enlarged pores and Post. oil and maybe breakouts and stuff like that. I remember years ago when they were first launched, trying it under my uneven eyes and thinking, this is incredible. And then putting makeup on top and it, it just, it rolls away. It needs to be almost the last step, literally like that. And it works yeah. quite nicely on men to give a soft focus finish. You've got oily skin. It's, it's great for that, a kind of blurriness without yes. makeup. And also, if you're somebody, and there are lots of women who don't want to have Botox, but they might want to have the temporary effect of having had Botox here. Well, I get Botox here, so... Yeah. I don't. I mean, I don't. it will fill temporary. It's like polyfiller. It's a soft focus polyfiller. It will temporarily fill your lines, but the minute you wash it off at the end of the day, the lines will come back. Please, uh, don't get overly excited. I and it's not new technology either. No, 
no it's silicon essentially there's some nice things in it with the silicon but essentially the filling bit is the silicon i've never had lines here my whole life my granddad didn't either no one in my family has lines there um i i remember when i sorry i was remember when botox was first launched being really smug because it was for, originally for here and yeah. saying to a doctor on tv i'll never need botox i don't frown and he said to me no but you do an awful lot of this nadine and there'll come a time when you'll want to soften that so i have no lines here and deep etched ones here so, I'm so you're way. obviously a smiler person aren't you you're the opposite well, well i'm the other way to you i do get an 11 so i get that botox but i don't have anything here mm. so I, I so i have vertical i don't have horizontal is it your i often think i mean i find a lot of makeup artists have very strong 11s here because of the concentration of, of working close up but is it because of your eyesight is it how is your eyesight uh so i'm long-sighted so um, okay. i can see really really far away um comparatively but i cannot see up close so yeah so i, I think I it might be that it, you might yours might be a folk i mean we both have the smiling lines but i think yours is the focus the mind's more of a constantly amazed by beauty claims lines yeah 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 I, I can't read packaging anymore without my glasses. So I used mm -hmm. to be able to do that and hold it far away from me and read it, but now I can't. I have to have my glasses on. I got sent, I mean, I, even with my glasses, Joe and I, we can't see the bottom of, li of uh, lipsticks, but I got sent some magnifying glasses the other day and I just said, oh, I want one and a half. What I suspect I need is three or four and just put the magnifying glasses on, which you can't, I, you're now out of focus, but I suddenly could see lipsticks shade. So Hi. magnifying glasses work for that, or I'm going to end up actually holding a magnifying glass. I have gone, I have gone fully large print Catherine Cookson on my Kindle as well. I have gone like fully massive print on my, on my Kindle. So Sorry, somebody's I... asking what colour was your NARS by the way? So the one they sent me was the wrong colour and then they sent me a tiny little sample pot. When I get off this call, I'm going to text okay. Nadine and Nadine can put it in the thing. I'll add it in. Basically, and the one I they thought say... I would be, I wasn't. And they've sent me a little sample pot of the one I am. Um, and can I oh, just you say, because you are going to go this? now, we're coming... Sorry? Sorry. Do you mean this, not the foundation? I'm I think she means this. No, so I mean I'm... that. Oh, I'm Greenland in that. I'm Greenland in that. Oh, well. Greenland? Yeah, so Groenland, it's that, so it's it's spelt in in the correct language. So it's G R O E N L A N D. Sorry, question asker. I thought you meant the foundation on my face, but no. This and is can I just say, let's just finish on something because you are one of the very rare people I know that can wear any colour lipstick, and you often do. Do you have a suit or red that you like to recommend to people? Mm. So I favour an orangey red. So I like uh, Mac Lady Danger. I like Laura Mercier Fire. I like Bobby Brown Flame. I like an orangey red. However, if you want a very classic red, um, Estee Lauder does a really good classic red. I think it's called Envious. Um, and then Bobby Brown does one just called Red, which is neither blue nor orange. Um, I like an orange one too. Yeah, I, I just think it looks a bit cooler, a bit more modern. However, Sam Chapman looks really good in a blue red. I think some people do just look really good in blue. I can wear a blue red and it's fine, but my preference is an orange red. I just kind of prefer how that looks. But or, I'll, send you, or... I'll send you a couple of uh, classic neutral reds that I like when I go upstairs. I'll look in my um, okay. I'll look in my stash. Or as Joe Jones and I always say whenever we mention Sam um, Chapman, let's be honest here, what doesn't she look good in? <laughs> oh well, that is the that is the irritating thing about her. Um, oh, I know Elson Two, Elson Two by Pat McGrath is an amazing red, which is quite a classic neutral red, great red. Elson Two, as in Karen Elson. As in Karen Elson. Yeah. yeah. That's absolutely brilliant. I shall list everything down below. If you've got any questions, just tag me or tag Sally. I mean, Sally's really busy, but if Sally wants to answer questions, she can, but more importantly, she'll text me some answers if they're missing, if those shades are missing. And I should yeah, say I this, of course, and I have no idea how much vintage makeup you've got. I'm sure I haven't got nearly as much as you, but maybe we should come back and do a vintage makeup thing and dig out all of our vintage makeup. I've got some... A wing. I've got some Calvin Klein. Do you remember the original completely loose sight packaging? No, that Calvin Klein makeup was so ahead of its time. It was so influential. It was an amazing, amazing makeup brand. Can you remember Trudy Collister launched it? Yes. Yes. Also, I'm convinced it was created by um, the Zara lady. 
Linda Cantello or I Diane think Linda Kendall. Cantello did it. Yeah, yeah, or Diane Kendall or someone like that. But it was just oh, it might have been Diane Kendall. Could have been Linda Cantello. But that's my era of that's the makeup I've kept from when I was first in the industry. I couldn't quite believe how lucky I was, and some of them I haven't even used. And now I'm glad I haven't used them. They're so beautiful. The little Prada minis, the Calvin Klein. I've got I've some got of the original. Um, that who was that makeup artist that worked originally for J Lo? I've got all his original range as well. Um, Scott Barnes. I've got all the Scott Barnes stuff as well. Oh, yeah, that'll Scott, be fun. Scott Barnes was it? Body Glow. Scott Barnes. Bling. Body Bling. Bling. Yeah, yeah. He was um he was a very good makeup artist. Scott. Something happened there though, didn't it? Anyway, I probably shouldn't say. On yeah, that. no, they had some sort of falling out. Definitely. Well, and wasn't it made up again? Oh, that's good because it, it was alleged, wasn't it, that sh that stories had got out about her into the tabloids and she had narrowed it down. But I'm. Ho but I, that was that's a, I have to say, I do think that was around the time of the phone hacking scandal, and I think yeah. a lot of people, a lot of celebrities, have since made up with yeah. their hairdressers and their makeup artists when they realised it was not them at all. Yeah, I think that's really, really true. I think probably lots of makeup artists and hairdressers got blamed for those things when they weren't true, and he was probably one of them because lots of relationships ended as well, didn't they? Because of it. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, yeah. Victoria Beckham, uh, Ben Cook, I mean, he, he was blamed for so many things and he absolutely was completely loyal and it was the phone hacking scandal. And, so. and, poor, and poor Jade Goody and her boyfriend uh, mm -hmm. split up, didn't they? Because stories that only they knew ended up in the papers and it was a phone hacking thing. So awful, so awful. And um, so I think Scott Barnes might have been a victim of that. So I'm glad they've made up. Yeah, I think they have definitely. And I'm sure she's back promoting the body bling when she was doing the um, the Super Bowl final. I'm sure there was some association there with it's her. It's a great definitely. product. It's a really good it product. It is. And it was ahead of its time as well. Yeah, yeah, I've got some of that as well. We can wheel that out as well. I've got that in the list. Oh, you've got the original one, have you? Yeah, yeah. I'll I think I might have actually used that in the mistaken belief that I was going to turn to Jennifer Lopez. Never happened. <laughs> I bought it in, um, you know, the brilliant makeup shop on Broadway. Um, the brilliant kind of um, makeup, uh, what's it called? Tony's, not Tony's. Ricky's. Ricky's. Um, I got it, I bought it in Ricky's when I was there one time. Right, final question, Sally. Where are your earrings from? They're by, uh, they're quite old, but I think she makes them all the time. Uh, it's Jennifer Fisher. Okay. Uh, so Jennifer Fisher, I think you can get it on net or you can get it from her shop in New York. And she also made my family padlock, which is a padlock with all my, my kids and my husband's initials on and my initials. Uh, she's great, Jennifer Fisher. Yeah. And then And also, can I just them. say, I know that everybody out there doesn't like to read a caption, but please read captions. Mine are slightly throwaway. Sally's are the most efficient information packed captions ever. Stop asking her questions when it's all in the caption. Do you know most people do? Most people do, but but you know when there's thousands of people watching, you always just get some who don't bother reading it, and they think they're the only ones asking me. And it's like there's thirty people asking the same thing. I know. Thank you so much, Sally. Bye, everyone. Lots of love. Bye. Bye. Bye.